I'm sure that many of you, like I have, have been keeping track of the news. And you can tell that the news has been crazy lately, especially with a lot of bad news, a continuing information about the coronavirus, businesses being affected, people losing their jobs. It's just a really difficult time right now. But I think this is why, as Christians, we need to be sharing good news even more. And especially because of Jesus Christ, we have good news. You know, one of the things that I think about is that as Christians, we should live differently because we have good news. And that good news inspires people to live differently or think about things differently. And with all the bad news going on, this is the time to share good news. This is the time to share Jesus. This is the time to show the world that we can live differently. You know, hard news and bad news is very difficult. And in fact, it can do a lot to people emotionally and physically and spiritually. And I know that it's causing a lot of different issues and problems in people's lives. And so as a minister, I know that there are so many people, maybe even you, that feel burdened. Burned because of the struggle you're going through, feelings of insecurity, feelings of the unknown about how things are happening, about your finances, about your health, all these different things. But I want to encourage you to have hope. You know, I was listening to a TED talk a while ago of a guy by the name of Sergeant Kevin Briggs, and he had a very popular TED talk, and it really had to do with him helping people not to commit suicide on the Golden Gate Bridge. And he was an officer for the, for the San Francisco police, and he was, it was his job that when people would be on the bridge considering suicide, it was his job to talk them down. And, and all of his experience talking about, well, how can we help people who are struggling and, and feeling this way? One of the things that Kevin emphasizes is the need for hope. He talked about how there was this young man who was on the bridge and he was having this conversation and the guy asked him if he's ever heard of the story of Pandora's box. And it was the story about Zeus giving this box to Pandora and Pandora's curiosity got so big that she opened it up and when it opened, it allowed famine and plague and evil to enter into the world. But in the box was also hope. Now this young man, when he was talking with Sergeant Briggs, talked about how he felt like Pandora and except inside the box there was no hope. But this is why the gospel and Jesus Christ is so important is because it does give hope. In this TED talk, Kevin Briggs talked about another man, this young boy who was standing on the on this bridge and one of the things that this young man did was he was standing there looking at the water and and sergeant briggs looked at him and just listened and cared and inspired hope and he was able to get this young man off and this young man today is now alive and he goes around sharing lectures spreading the message of hope and sharing his story you know he helped a lot of other people understand that hope is possible even when you're at your darkest moments. You know, today I want us to talk a little bit about how can we help people in this time? In this time when we may be quarantined, maybe even feeling like we're struck with isolation, how do we still help spread the message of hope? How do we still spread the message of Christ? How can we help people? You know, as a minister, I know that this is a trying time. In all my ministry experience, I know that people are hurting spiritually right now. As a, and doing Christian counseling with people, I know that people are hurting emotionally. And having a degree and a background in business, and having a degree in business and in economics, I look at the news and I know we're in interesting times. But I want people to know hope is possible because Jesus is. Because God loves you. That God loves people. And so I want to share with you a story about a group of men, a group of men that understood what it means to be in quarantine, a group of men that understood isolation 
And we're living in a time of great violence and warfare. But in the midst of this darkness, in the midst of quarantine and hardship and affliction, even with their health, they discovered hope. And they didn't just hold on to that hope themselves. They gave it away. They helped inspire hope by sharing good news. And so if you have your Bibles, turn with me to 2 Kings chapter 7. We're going to be reading verses 1 through 9. It says, But Elisha said, Hear the word of the Lord. Thus says the Lord, Tomorrow about this time a sea of fine flour shall be sold for a shekel, and two seas of barley for a shekel at the gate of Samaria. Then the captain of whose hand the king leaned said to the man of God, If the Lord himself should make windows in heaven, could this thing be? But he said, You shall see it with your own eyes. You shall not eat of it. Now there were four men who were lepers at the entrance to the gate, and they said to one another, Why are we sitting here until we die? If we say, Let us enter the city, the famine is in the city, and we shall die there. And if we sit here, we die also. So now come, let us go over to the camp of the Syrians. If they spare our lives, and we shall live, and if they kill us, we shall but die. So they arose at twilight to go to the camp of the Syrians. But when they came to the edge of the camp of the Syrians, behold, there was no one there. For the Lord had made the army of the Syrians hear the sound of chariots and horses, the sound of a great army, so that they said to one another, Behold, the king of Israel has hired against us the king of the Hittites and the kings of the Egyptians to come after us. So they fled away in the twilight and abandoned their tents, their horses, and their donkeys, leaving the camp as it was, and fled for their lives. And when these lepers came to the edge of the camp, they went into the a tent and ate and drank and carried off silver and gold and clothing and went and hid them. Then they came back and entered another tent and carried off the things from it and went and hid them. Then they said to one another, We are not doing right. This is a day of good news. If we are silent and wait until the morning light, punishment will overtake us. Now, therefore, come, let us go and tell the king's household. So here's an interesting story. Here are four lepers inflicted with, with a disease. And they know what it means to be in quarantine. They were living outside of the city. And they knew what it was like to be in a time where there was great uncertainty because there was a famine going on. There was violence going on. And they were so hopeless. They were saying, you know what? If we go into the city, we're going to die. If we sit here, we're going to die. Let's go to the Syrians. And maybe they'll even kill us. But they were looking for some hope. And in this moment of looking for hope, God came. And God came and brought great hope. He brought great news. And he used these four men to help spread that message. You know, one of the things that we need to remember about stories like this and the message of the gospel is that we need to share the good news because people need good news because people are often living in bad news. Have you ever thought of that? People need the good news because people are often living the bad news. You know, the Bible tells us that we live in a world of sin and death. We know from the book of Romans that all have sinned and fallen short of the glory of God. We know how horrible this world of sin and death can be. And as a minister, I've talked with a lot of people. And one of the things that I know is people are hurting and struggling. Even people in churches, even Christians struggle. You know, as a minister, oftentimes you know a lot of the personal side and the stories and the things that, go, that happen behind closed doors that other people at church may not know. And ministers don't share that information, protecting families and their privacy and so forth. But I know that there's a lot of hurting people in and outside of the church. But what do we do? One of the things that we need to do is share the good news because people are living in bad news. And we can tell them there's hope. You don't have to live bad news any longer. It doesn't mean there's no problems. It doesn't mean there's no hardships or struggle. But a change of perspective, a change of priority, a change of heart and mind can make life more tolerable or meaningful or purposeful in life. You know, I was reading a book 
by Johan Yari, and he was an award-winning uh, journalist, and he had a really popular TED Talk as well on depression. And his book, Lost Connections, what became a, a New York Times bestseller. Now, I don't necessarily agree with everything in this book, but a lot of the stuff in it had some good content in it. But one of the good points that he made was that our culture does a lot of good things, but one of the things that culture doesn't do very well is help people's deepest needs. And he was helping know that's what causes a lot of our depression is the lack of meeting the greatest needs. And he talked about loneliness and he talked about purpose and all these different things. And I thought, imagine how the good news helps resolve that. Because when you're abiding in Christ, Christ is with you. You're not alone. That he gives you a purpose to go and do the Father's will. You know, one of the things that we have to understand is the gospel is the good news. That's what the gospel actually means. It means it's the good news. It's the good news that we can be saved. Good news that we can have a relationship. Good news that we can live life differently and have hope. You know, you probably know people who are struggling in their life right now. And they're looking for hope. And if you look at their lives, maybe they would even admit... I'm living most of my life in bad news. Well, as someone who cares about them, are you willing to share with them good news? Are you willing to share with them about the one who loves them and created them and died for them and rose for them? Are you living in a manner that shows them, you know what, there's a different way to live? That you can have hope because of the good news. You can share with them, this is what Christ has done for me. You know, these lepers from the story that I just read realized that what God had done was good news. Because just a moment earlier, they felt depressed. They felt hopeless. They were hungry. They were quarantined. They were sick. And they were just thinking, well, we're going to die anyways. Let's go do this. Let's go do that. But God provided good news. God came and was involved and did something amazing. And what he did in the time of the lepers was amazing. But what he did through Jesus Christ was even more amazing. You know, we need a world that needs more good news. If you went on Google or the internet right now, probably most of the stories you pull up on any news site is going to be bad news. If you pull up people's Facebook accounts and you scroll and you see what people are posting, you can see that people are posting a lot of bad news. I see that there's a great need for the good news. What if we help share the good news with people? Share who Jesus is, what Jesus has done, which is the greatest good news of all. Then maybe they don't have to live bad news any longer. Or maybe you've been struggling. Maybe you've been living with bad news. You've been focusing on all the things that are going wrong in life and all the bad circumstances and all the bad hardships. Have you taken time to think about what God has done for you in your life? How, is, how did God give you Jesus? Offer eternal life. How has he helped you through the hard times in your life already? Because you're still here. How can he help you with your anxieties and your stresses, your fears and your worries, your frustrations and your angers. You see, that's why the gospel is transformational. Because Jesus changes how we live our lives, changes how we think. And it helps us to dwell on things that are good. And in fact, the Apostle Paul tells us in Philippians 4 to think of things above. He tells us to think of good things and pure things holy things. And that's the mentality we should have. Are we dwelling on those things so much so that they're on our mind and we have to share it with other people? So one of the first things that we're going to do during this time of quarantine and pandemic is while other people may be spreading bad news or living out bad news, let's be active in sharing good news. Are you calling people and sharing the good news? Are you going on Facebook and sharing scripture? Are you telling people about what Christ has done for you? 
Are you calling people and just loving on them and telling them you're not alone? I'm still here with you and I love you and God is here for you and he loves you. You know, the way that we're going to overcome this time, and I, I do have some concerns is because I know that people are struggling emotionally because of this pandemic and all the worries and the stresses and all the problems that it's causing financially and health-wise and family and relationships. But instead of just adding on more bad news and stressing people out and angering people or depressing people, let's bring them the one thing that can really change their lives with hope. And that is the gospel of Jesus. Let's spread good news because most people are living bad news. And the way we can impact people is to help them stop living bad news, but start living out the gospel. Start living out the good news. Start living because of Jesus. Start living like Jesus and living for Jesus. Another thing that I want us to think about is take time to enjoy the good news. Did you see what the lepers did when they showed up at the camp? They, they realized what God had done. And not only that, they went and they took the articles of silver and gold. They took the articles of clothing and they feasted. They ate. They didn't just know good news. They lived it out. They enjoyed it. They celebrated it. And they acknowledged it. You know, that's one of the things that I want to encourage us to do is live out the good news. You know, maybe you're having some more downtime than usual and that's stressing you out. You know, I like being busy. I like working and things like that. But maybe this is an opportunity for us to and celebrate and to enjoy the good news. You know, one of the things that we're told in Scripture to do is to abide in Christ. Have you taken time during this quarantine or this pandemic to enjoy Christ? To abide in Christ? Maybe wake up in the morning and pour your cup of coffee and pull out your Bible and read one of the Gospels and just enjoy Him. Say, Christ, I want to know you more. I want to know you again. I want to know you better. I want to know what you taught. I want to actually know who you really are. I want to actually know what you did. I don't want to just remember what a preacher said. I don't want to just remember what I think Jesus would say or do. I want to actually know you, Jesus. I want to abide in you. I want to celebrate you. I want to read through the Gospels because I want to live the good news. I want to celebrate it. I want to enjoy it. You know, it's easy to just go on your phone and read news articles and go on social media and just get negative and frustrated and worried and angry. What if you set down the phone for a moment? Just put it away. Turn it off if you have to. And pull up your Bible. Or get on your knees and pray. You know, those are the moments where you can really enjoy the good news. You know, Christ did not just give us good news. He meant for that good news to be lived out and enjoyed. And, that, and when we do that, we do what the lepers did. And we say, this is what God has done. This is what God has done. Even in the midst of famine, even in the midst of violence, even in the midst of our quarantine, even in the midst of our leprosy, these guys had all the bad circumstances. But when they had some good news, they didn't focus on their leprosy. They didn't focus on the quarantine. They didn't focus on the violence. They didn't focus on the famine. They ate and they drank and they enjoyed the good news. You see, that's how we can use this time not to be more miserable, but to be joyful. You know, the Bible says rejoice in the Lord always. Again, I say rejoice. The Apostle Paul said that. And do you know what the interesting thing is? Is that Paul wrote that when he was in prison. When he was quarantined to prison. And what's interesting is many of the letters that the Apostle Paul wrote was when he was in quarantine or when he was in prison, in, in essence. He was quarantined to a prison because he, of preaching the gospel. You see, Jesus, Paul didn't limit the spreading of the gospel or the good news by being in prison. And in fact, it was in his time of solitude or isolation or imprisonment where he made some of his greatest impacts. 
Maybe this is an opportunity to make some of your greatest impacts. Maybe this is a time to reach out to your friends and family who you know need Jesus Christ. You know, one of the things that we need to do is be inspired and to take joy in the gospel, in the gospel and to take joy in the good news. You know, instead of just sitting and watching Netflix or Disney Plus or Hulu, I want you to take a moment just, and even if you have to stop this video to do this, you know, take a moment and be thankful. Take a moment and be joyful. You know, in, in the worship assemblies, we often sing a song, you know, count your blessings. In this time of turmoil, are you still counting your blessings? And I've realized it's in the time of struggle and hardship and bad circumstances that you need to count your blessings even more. You know, these lepers, they enjoyed the meal as I was talking about just a moment ago, and they didn't focus on all the bad things, but they celebrated the food. They celebrated what God had done. They took joy, and they were thankful. But their joy and thankfulness wasn't just limited to some good emotional feelings. It spurred them to action. It's because them think, you know what? This is such good news that I can't keep it to myself. We have to go and tell people. Let's go and tell the king. Let's go tell the king. And the king can use his leadership to tell the people. God has done something good and we have to share it. This is good news. You know, when you are so thankful for Christ, when you are so joyful in Christ, and when he fills you up, that circumstances can't thwart your joy. Circumstances can't thwart your thankfulness or your love or your worship or your obedience or your humility towards God. And all these things, you look at God and you say, God, yes, I may be having this struggle or this hardship or this problem. And we may be having some really bad circumstances around the world. But God, I will still be thankful. I will still be joyful because I still have you and what you have done for us. That even in a world of bad news, you are still willing to provide good news, especially good news named Jesus Christ. And so these lepers went to the king, and these lepers went to the king and told them the good news. They were, they were motivated, they were inspired. They didn't just think about themselves. You know, during a pandemic and quarantine, it's easy to just dwell on ourselves and our own feelings and our own thoughts and our own needs. But this is a time where we think, you know what? I'm abiding in Christ. I'm celebrating the good news. And I have to share it with other people. I can't keep it to myself. I have to tell them this is what God has done for us. And this is what God is still doing for us, even in these difficult times. They were inspired and encouraged. Are you so inspired and encouraged with joy from God that even if the world is falling down, you're still lifting him up? That's one of the things that we can do during this time. I encourage you, if you have Facebook, go through all your Facebook friends and say, you know what, this is a time of the world humbling. Maybe people are thinking about spiritual things. Maybe people are living out even more bad news. Maybe this is a time where I can share with them good news. Maybe they're being humbled enough to maybe consider the message of Jesus Christ. Or yes, there's a pandemic that shows us that life is futile, that, it's, that it really is a vapor and a mist. So I don't want time to be wasted. I want to redeem that time and I want to go and share with them the message of Jesus because I care about them. We have, and they, these lepers, they went and told the king. They didn't wait. They didn't... Just say maybe later next year or maybe five years or maybe someone else can do it. They chose to do it and they did it immediately. And they were so full of joy and thankfulness that they did it. Maybe you need to do this as well. But I know that maybe some of you get intimidated and think, well, I can't really do that. How can I tell people about Jesus? I don't know how to share the Bible. I don't... Well, one of the things is, do you know the story of Jesus? Do you know that God sent Jesus into the flesh? That he died, buried, and rose again. And during his ministry, he made known his love. And he taught the ways of salvation. That 
Jesus was the fulfillment of every Old Testament prophecy. And then share with them the plan of salvation on how to accept God's grace. You know, sometimes we overcomplicate it or we think we're not qualified to share good news. I didn't go to ministry school. I, I don't have a degree in Bible. Well, let me tell you this. The lepers didn't have a degree in Bible either. The lepers did not have great influence. They were lepers. They didn't have a big circle of friends. They were quarantined and exiled. They were social outcasts. But one of the things that the Bible teaches us time and time again is that God uses the most unlikely people, even people who don't think that they can, to do the great things, to share good news. And this is what we see here, is that the lepers spread good news. Maybe during this time, you can humble yourself and say, you know what, God, I may not have every answer. I may not have a degree in Bible, but I have love in my heart for my neighbor. And, and I want you to be glorified, Father. And I'm willing to obey and say, here am I, send me. You see, God can use you. And maybe God is using this time to grow you to make a good difference, to share the good news. So one of the things that I want us to remember today is that we want to share good news in a world of bad news. So what are some things that we need to remember? You know, we need to remember that most people are living bad news, which is why we need to share good news. We need to and take time to enjoy the good news. Take time to enjoy Jesus. And we need to be so full of joy and thankfulness that we're inspired to share the good news with other people. And we need to remember that God can use anybody to share the good news, including you. So I want to encourage you, use this time to share the good news and be a messenger of good news in a world of bad news.